this episode of The Dog Show, I welcome back regular guest, Dr. John Morgan. John is a partner veterinarian at Gordon Vet Hospital, where he specializes in orthopedic conditions and arthritis in dogs. In this interview, we discuss whether dog vaccinations are necessary for new puppies, which vaccinations are most important, and some other key questions about this topic. John, welcome back to The Dog Show once again. Thanks for coming on. Thanks very much for having me, Will. Yeah, I had a lot of fun the first time we had a chat and, um, you know, the our listeners really enjoyed all the, the tips you shared. So I'm excited to get back into that today. Yeah, no, I, I really um, love the opportunity to come and have a chat. And yeah, hopefully, at least if people can take away one thing from today, I'd be a happy man. I'm sure they'll take away more than one thing. <laughs> um, we were having a chat before we got on, on the air and you already given me heaps of tips about my dog. So well, yeah. a bit of free vet advice. I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure that's the only reason I'm here, just for free vet advice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A bit, few perks from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so today we were going to talk predominantly about vaccinations because it's really important when someone gets a new puppy to understand about vaccinations. Uh, I know you just got a new puppy of your of your own. I did, yeah, last Thursday. Uh, Harold. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he's a um, he's an Irish terrier, so not a it's not a super common breed. But yeah. um, we looked into the the breed personality, spent a lot of time with a few at work, and um, yeah, we just decided that we'd we'd uh, get young Harold. So, okay. Yeah, he's been he's been great. A bit of trouble, but he's been great. Harold sounds more like an old man's name than that, a dog's name. That was the 100% the intention. Okay. He's, he's going to have a, a little beard, which is right. a, a feature of the breed. So we wanted to sort of capture that. with, uh, And his personality very much suits a Harold as well. Funnily enough, my brother and I used to live together and we always spoke about getting a dog and all this kind of stuff. This is before I had my first puppy. Oh, yeah. And um, we always joked that we'd go with the name Graham because it just yeah. wasn't a dog's name at all. No, no, no. <laughs> and that's the names that I always like to go for are the ones that, that we don't see that much at work. And yeah, I yeah. checked on Harold and there's about five in the whole history, cool. the 50 year history of that practice. I'm like, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that'd be an interesting data on the names. Yeah, the name stuff's pretty interesting. And we've had, we've had I mean, a cat, I know we shouldn't be talking about cats, but we've had a cat um, that was known as God, Emperor of Mankind. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I imagine that he got into a bit of trouble. Yeah. So <laughs> is there like can, like some themes around the names or? Uh, I guess they sort of follow trends, I would say. Mm. Like I, I definitely, you know, we had a run of Molly's. We've had a run of um, Coco's. You mm. know, like you sort of see trends in, in the names generally. And then there's a few outliers uh, in there. Uh, some people have really interesting names. Like I saw a dog called Aspen yesterday because okay. um, of the red rusty color. They like the um, the the name because it's sort of the red rusty color linked with Aspen when they went there, which was in fall or autumn. Okay. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool names like that out there. It's probably becoming a bit more like naming a, a baby these days. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm always like, oh God, just pick a name. Like, people come in with puppies without a name. And then having been through it, I was like, this is really hard. Like you, yeah. have, to, you have to like... Try the name out and you have to, we took us like three days to finally decide on Harold. It's a big decision. I remember thinking the same thing when we got our dog, Frankie, um, and we were like, it was a female dog. Yeah. And we felt like there was heaps of good names for male dogs, but not as many for female. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I thought that, yeah, but it just seemed really like. Put an old lady name on a girl. It doesn't quite. Yeah, maybe like, not. I don't right, know. <laughs> Gray Amina or. <laughs> Gray Amina. <laughs> Yeah, we're probably getting uh, a little bit off track. <laughs> Sorry, we could we could talk about <laughs> yeah. uh, you know dog names forever. I oh, it's a topic unto itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, vaccinations. Why are well are vaccinations important, and if so, why are they important? Yeah, um, I mean, we we feel we'd probably use the term vital. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we do hear about uh, you know major outbreaks of, of diseases from. Uh, years gone by and i know that they probably don't happen in, in most places anymore but um one one real um i guess pivotal point in the history of vaccinations for for dogs was when they um we had an outbreak of a disease called parvovirus um, which okay. is one we very routinely vaccinate for now probably the most important or one of the most important components of our c5 vaccination um and that that actually um because of the lack of herd immunity which i'm sure you um viewers and listeners are very familiar with um we we saw this massive massive outbreak in the 70s and 80s where you know literally millions of dogs developed this really bad gastroenteritis which caused you know upwards of beyond 50 percent fatality oh wow yeah so um and and now thankfully um people are much more savvy on vaccinations and we have this herd immunity and while there are clusters of parvovirus that's still going around, fortunately, we, we don't sort of see that epidemic level of, of disease that we saw back then. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I just had a bit of a, a brain fart as you're talking, like comparing the vaccinations you give your dog to, you know, what the world's experience at the moment. I never kind of put the two together. I just thought vaccinations that dogs getting, yeah, it's their health and the rest of it. I never kind of thought about yeah. how those two um, relate in terms of you're talking about kind of pandemics in the past for dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and they, you know, they still happen on, on a um, mm. probably not as significant as COVID level, but we're, we're certainly still seeing, you know, mini spikes in kennel cough, which is a respiratory disease mm. at dog parks. So again, something that we vaccinate for. Um, and, and definitely, yeah, there's there's benefits in having a vaccination to stop outbreaks of that, which has a far lower fatality rate, but definitely can affect a lot of dogs and, and cause pneumonia in some cases. Okay. So, okay. Um, again, you know, it, while vaccines um, by no means are perfect and some diseases, diseases do sneak through that barrier protection, they're really, really important to, to try and um, provide that herd immunity and, and really, really stop these major disease outbreaks. Okay. So what are we, what are you talking about um, are the most common vaccinations? Are they different by age are they different by location geography yeah definitely um so i mean i guess my experience i've I've done a bit of work in the uk and a bit of work in um canada Um, okay so i sort of have a bit of a grasp on on those kind of areas but across the world you know people vaccinate for very different things because the disease is much like with humans Mm. uh, sort of pocket in in certain areas but as far as uh, where we are sydney um the c5 um which covers five diseases okay so um hence the name hence the name <laughs> um and c for canine um, yeah. <laughs> and it's uh distemper hepatitis parvovirus parainfluenza and border teller um mm-hmm. not going to go into too much detail, <laughs> but basically that's just the the core five that we feel mm-hmm. is is the most vital to provide coverage for there are a few exceptions to that um recently actually we had an outbreak of a, a disease that's spread by rats um called leptospirosis um, and that that actually uh, is is much more common in in northern parts of Australia, and we do also see different um, subspecies or, or different types of that that bacteria in Canada, the UK. So they all they all do vaccinate for that in different parts of the world, um, depending on rat populations, temperature, those kind of things. Okay, so a vaccina- vaccinations like are there, is there a higher rate of vaccinations for dogs in like I guess. Um, Western countries compared to maybe third world countries or other countries? Or yeah, I mean. So, I mean, look no further than our own backyard, I guess. Mm. Um, so in a lot of Indigenous Australian communities, the rate of vaccination is sort of at the floor. Right. Um, so there are a lot of, of, of vet services that get out to remote Indigenous communities and do vaccination programs, mm-hmm. but they're really only getting vaccinated, you know, once every one to two years and the dogs that can be caught at the time. So if a litter of puppies sort of comes in between that, which, you know, basically a, a, theoretically a dog can have a litter of puppy every six months, mm-hmm. um, then we're uh, we're sort of well, a bit more, but um, uh, we're sort of looking at, at all these populations of puppies that could be uh, predisposed in those communities within Australia. So, um, and and that you know could be extrapolated to a lot of of the world or, or sort of developing nations. Okay. So when when do I, if I've got a new puppy, when do I need to get the C five? Yeah. So the um, the very first vaccination uh, most piece people do would be a C3 vaccination, okay. um, which would be the eight week. So that's just the, um, uh, distemper hepatitis and parvovirus alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we recommend, um, this is a very topical, um, program as well. So okay. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of take what I say as gospel. Every vet's a little bit different. And okay. again, this is very regional, um, but at our practice, we do, um, eight weeks, 12 weeks and 16 weeks. So eight weeks is just a C3 a C5 at 12 weeks and a C5 at 16 weeks. And is it before that C3, it's recommended that the dog doesn't kind of go outside or interact with other dogs, that kind of stuff? Is yeah. That- I mean, uh, well, in, in Sydney, at least, most dog, most dogs wouldn't have gotten to a new home yet. Yeah. So um, in most cases, the dogs that we're seeing have had the C3, which is great. Yeah. Uh, most breeders that um, we experience are pretty savvy on vaccinations yeah. and we find that that one's already covered. But yes, yeah, certainly you want to reduce the the risk um, because that first C three um, isn't as effective as the other two vaccinations for for a host of reasons. So if you're in a high risk area, or if there's known parvo uh, virus cases around, or distemper or hepatitis, mm. um, you really need to sort of um, talk to your vet about the best the best measures to pr- protect your dog in that sort of very very crucial age. Okay, um, so. A question that people might have, are vaccinations safe? Are there, is there anything they need to worry about, about getting a vaccination? Yeah, I, I mean, this comes up a lot. And, you know, there 
was a trend. I think probably COVID has changed it from my experience, but mm. I think a lot of people do um, do worry about vaccinations. They sort of um, they do worry about the side effects, and I'm not going to say that they're side effect free. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's definitely um, there's a few issues that we do see after vaccinations. The vast, vast, vast majority are very, very mild. So mm. um, they can develop a very short term fever, which is kind of desirable actually for developing immunity. Okay. Um, some dogs can develop a small lump in between their shoulder blades, um, which is usually where the vaccination is given. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in other cases, we do see, you know, they go off their food or they can um, they can just be quite flat after the mm. vaccination. Um, they're, they're sort of not uncommon. So mm. you probably see them in around about five to 10% of cases. Most dogs, you know, aside from a little bit of itching at the injection site, recover quite well. Mm -hmm. I actually gave Harold his um, second oh, yeah. vaccination <laughs> last week and he was absolutely fine. So okay. no no symptoms whatsoever. He's pretty much straight back, back at him uh, within 12 hours. He must be pretty active at the moment, I imagine. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Learning his way around. Yeah, definitely. Tease teeth first. Uh, Ask yeah. questions later. <laughs> So we're working on it. So now after giving advice to people for so long about it, you've got to, you're actually hitting it head on. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's been the hardest thing is like not, um, is being on the other side of the fence. It's really hard. You know, yeah. like you can, I can give out all this advice and we can have all these conversations about what to do, mm. but it's really hard to, yeah. to sort of actually. Yeah, action. Theoretic, the theory and then action. Really exactly. Well. Yeah. In, in yeah. practice, it's very difficult. And I sympathize. If anybody has seen this that I've seen before and I've been a little bit blase, I apologize. <laughs> um. One question I just thought of then is around rescues as well. So most, I guess, uh, rescue organisations will vaccinate dogs before they get rehomed. Is that yeah. is that common or? Um, they will, yeah. They, I think that most of them have that uh, at least one C five without because yeah. they often have a checkered vaccination history or, yeah. or no vaccination history. Um, so yeah, all of the good rescue groups will definitely administer a vaccination either at the time that they go into the shelter yeah. or as they go home. Um, okay. Also, because the prevalence of a lot of infectious diseases is unfortunately quite high in those settings as well. Mm. So vaccination of course. there is, is really, really vital. Um, important to note, though, the, the, the lapse between um, vaccination and um, and protection from those diseases varies greatly between the, the disease, but it can be up to two weeks. So, right. again, always talk to your vet at the time. If, you, if you're really putting your dog into a high-risk situation like a kennel or, um, you know, and in an area where there is a known disease, just have that conversation and, and ask the right questions. So if you're getting your, your puppy vaccinated, you're probably best to wait for a couple of weeks until you're comfortable to put them in the situations that they weren't vaccinated for? Or... Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a topical question, that one yeah. as well. So um, there, there's there's two schools of thought, um, and it really does depend, again, on the, the, local, um, the local herd immunity and the local diseases. Mm. Um, Yes, it's very important to protect dogs from these diseases, but socialization and, and interacting with other dogs as early as possible has been shown to, to minimize um, you know, future behavioral issues and really um, dogs benefit from socializing early. Yeah. So you really, um, again, chat to your vet at the time of vaccination, just find out what they recommend. Um, but yeah, in a lot of cases, it's best to actually sort of um, look at the risk of the diseases in that setting and, and sort of try and get them socialized as much as possible. Yeah, I had a, a dog trainer on uh, Ian Stone from okay. America and we spoke about puppy socialization and he was talking about how that pre-16-week period or 8 to 16 because that's after they come from the breed or whatever is, is so important in terms of being able to socialize and, and learn the habits they're going to have for the rest of their lives. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah. Think, um, I think that the, you know, we want to sort of protect them and we don't want anything to happen to our puppies and, mm -hmm. you know... A, I've only known Harold for a week, but I'd be devastated if anything happened yeah, to him. Yeah, of course. Um, but you, you really do, uh, you need to sort of get them out there and you really do. Uh, I totally agree with them. You know, socialization before that age is, is so vital mm. um, and, and it just makes for them to be happier and, and for the relationship with humans to work a lot better as well. Okay. Okay. And so one final question about vaccinations, they need to be boosted or do you need to get them on a regular occurrence to kind of make sure that they're still working yeah yeah definitely um so we the the c3 component which i've been banging on for a while about yeah uh, <laughs> that that one um that one has longer term immunity so a lot of vets will do a, a three-year booster we typically do annual um just because it's simpler and we find that the immunity that you get for it is a lot more reliable mm -hmm. Um, but you can do up to three years um, with some products. Um, but the the kennel cough, the, I guess the C2 component of it, is generally done annually, mm. as is things like leptospirosis. Um, 
One that your North American um, viewers and listeners might obviously hear a lot about is rabies, which is obviously not a, a disease that we see in Australia in, in a terrestrial form, or basically it's in bats, but not in dogs. Yeah. Um, that one is boosted every three years over there. And and definitely that's that's probably their most important vaccination. And I've, I've heard of cases of rabies, so it's very much still a disease that we need to look out for. Needs to be worried or think mm-hmm. about, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great. Well, that's, I think, everything we need to know about vaccinations for now. Yeah. Um, but I think if I was to, to summarise it, speak to your vet. I know that um, Gordon Vet's really good in, you know, providing up, like, uh, reminders sorry when when my dog frankie's due for for her vaccination so yeah most vets i i assume would have some system like that to kind of keep you updated yeah, it's becoming more common yeah we, i've been um i've spent a lot of hours on sort of fine-tuning our vaccination reminder system because of the obviously the herd health implications and, and just helping people yeah. um obviously if your vet's not as good at which i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it's a bad thing but yeah. use your own phone you know, yeah have your own systems in place and and obviously yeah just um Make sure you've got all of the information in one place so that you can reference back to that. Yeah, I, I do. I've got a reminder set for like the parasite stuff, which yeah. we'll talk about in another episode. But, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll cover that soon. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, John. That's been really helpful. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's been really good. Cheers.